This is a Vitria 7 workflow demonstration video reviewing the TAVR planning application. From the study list, left click to select your patient. From the application selector, left click to select the TAVR planning application. Then left click to select the series to load into the application. Hold control to select multiple items. Then click the open button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen or double click the TAVR planning application to launch. Upon loading the exam, the software will automatically apply segmentation. It will also automatically get us close to the valve plan. There are a few worksheets built into the software that we can select for our workflow. These are at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen and available to choose by clicking on the drop-down. Choose the worksheet closest to your needs. Note that you can also edit and create custom templates when needed. To be successful in TAVR planning, you have to follow the worksheet by left-clicking on the measurement which activates the associated tool with that measurement. Then create the measurement by using the appropriate tool, clicking done to lock in the measurement, and also taking a snapshot to save all of your work up to that point for each measurement. Note that prior to clicking any measurements, the tool it is on right now is the crosshair and we have our reference lines. One common mistake many users do is they want to drag the crosshair to get it closer to the valve plane. And they also like to oblique. Now, if we do that while we're active on the common aorta in the measurement list, as soon as I select the first measurement to create, which is valve plane, our images will be reset back to where the software set the initial valve plane at. So do not drag the crosshair around and get it close to the valve plane because as soon as you click valve plane, it's going to re oblique you. Now that I have left clicked to select the valve plane procedure, note the crosshair has disappeared. If we would like to ever have a crosshair reference while we are navigating TAVR, it is recommended that you hold down the left alt key on the keyboard. Now notice as I'm rolling my center wheel, I have no crosshair. If I hold down the left alt key, a crosshair is displayed on our images and the associated tool for any measurement that was on in the measurement list will be available after I let go of the left alt key. So my valve plane tool, which is the hand with the box, is active when I let go of the left alt key. To create our valve plane, we will use the short axis data set and we will zoom in by holding down the center wheel, left clicking and pulling the mouse towards us. We can window level when needed by right and left mousing together and editing the window level. For the valve plane, we will want to always mark the right coronary cusp nadir first. To identify the nadir, we will scroll up and down once that valve inserts into the aorta, we will drop a single click where it disappears by left clicking. Note the red box here in our axial image. This is red for right. Then we will mark our left, left clicking, and then we will mark our non coronary cusp. Once those three have been created, note we have a purple valve plane on our MPR images. Now we can still manipulate our valve plane points if we need to, and we can press the space bar to toggle us through the points so that we can evaluate it in our MPRs. To edit any point if we need to, left click and drag that point. Pressing the space bar will then toggle you through the next point Click and drag if needed. Now that we're happy with our valve plan, a common measurement 
that users like to create is the C-arm angle. This will be created in the 3D. Roll your center wheel on the 3D to zoom in. Hold down the center wheel to pan your image. Note the red rectangle, which is the right coronary cusp in our 3D image. There also is a white box, which is the midpoint of all the three points. Right click and rotate the 3D so that the red box is on top of the white box. And that we have a single purple line displayed in 3D. At the bottom right hand corner of the 3D image, we have our C-arm angle approximation, which is LAO 17, Craney 2 for this exam. Click on the snapshot to save this. If you wish to document this with an annotation, you can use the annotation and free text this into this box as well by left clicking. Take a snapshot to save any work. Now that our valve plane has been created and we have documented our C-arm angle, we will continue to our next measurement, which is the annulus size. Again, this is left click to activate. Now that the annulus size measurement has been selected, note the ROI tool has been activated as well. In our short axis view, we have two ways to create this measurement. One would be a double left click in the middle of the vessel. This will automatically detect the contours for us. So if this is a good quality exam, the software will do a good job in detecting the contours for us automatically. So double left click in the middle, and the software will automatically contour the annulus for us. This will include the area, circumference, max, and min. To edit this measurement, Hover your mouse at the contour, left click, and redraw when needed. We can smooth this measurement if we need to by right clicking and selecting smooth. That was the semi-automatic measurement. If the data quality is not great, we do not recommend using the automatic or semi-automatic contouring. I'm going to delete this measurement by right clicking and selecting delete all to recreate this measurement using the single click method. The annulus size measurement is active again. Instead of double clicking in the middle, I'm going to do single clicks around the perimeter of the annulus. This will let us drop points. When we drop our last point, double left click. This will close the contour, and then now we have our measurement created for us. You can edit this again as needed by left-clicking and dragging. Or if you wanted to edit a single point that you dropped, you can hover over that point. When you hover over that point, a hand with a finger will appear, and you can left-click and drag this point around if you need to. Now that we're happy with our measurement, Click Done in the measurement list to lock it in and take a picture of the measurement by clicking on the snap at the upper right hand corner of the axial viewport. Continuing on to our next measurement, which is the sinotubular junction size. Left click to activate the measurement. We will then navigate to the sinotubular junction. To aid in doing this, we will hold down the left alt key on the keyboard to toggle our crosshair on. With the crosshair on, we can click and drag to the STJ. We can also oblique our images as well. When holding the alt key down, we can click and drag the line so that we can oblique our images. Now that we're at our STJ, we have the option to either double left click in the middle of the vessel for the semi-automatic measurement, or we can do the single left clicks around the perimeter. Double left click on the last point to close the contours. 
edit contours when needed. Click done to lock the measurement in and then take a snapshot to save all the work up to this point. Note that since I have obliqued my images on our MPRs, we do not have a single purple line anymore. To reset us back to valve plane, we can click back on the valve plane measurement in the measurement list and then proceed to our next measurement. Next will be the sinus of Valsalva width. Left click to select this measurement. Note the ruler tool is activated automatically for us. Roll the center wheel, hold down the left alt key if you would like the reference crosshair lines activated. Once we're at our sinus of Valsalva, we will left click and drag, left click and drag, left click and drag. Edit these ruler tools as needed by hovering over the start point or the end point of the ruler as needed. Once we are done with the measurement, click done and lock and save this by clicking the snapshot. Next will be sinus of Valsalva height. Left click to activate. Roll the center wheel so that we can view the sinus. Single left click to measure the sinus. This is an optional measurement that many users skip. If you do not need this measurement, skip the measurement on the list and proceed to the next one. But if you are going to document this, be sure to click done and take a snapshot. The next measurement is the annulus to left main height. Left click to activate. Roll the center wheel to navigate to the ostia of the left main. When the ostia of the left main is visualized, left click at that point and the software will automatically drop the ruler tool down to the annulus. Edit as needed by clicking and dragging. Click done to lock this in. The next measurement is the annulus to the RCA height. Left click to activate this measurement. Roll the center wheel to navigate to the RCA. Once the ostia of the RCA is visualized, left click, which will then drop the ruler tool straight down to the valve plane. Click done to lock this measurement in and then take a snapshot to save this. The aortic neck angle will be next. This measurement is created several ways. We will use this in the 2D MPRs for this workflow. We will change our 2D images from an oblique view to an orthogonal view. From the coronal, we will zoom out, zoom out slightly and we will reactivate the angle tool. Roll the center wheel to scroll through and notice our oblique box on our coronal view. We are going to align with the angle of the valve plane on the coronal viewport. Left click. Make sure that the teal line is close to the angulation of the valve plane. Left click at the vertex. Bring your mouse straight horizontal and left click. This will then measure the aortic neck angle from the coronal viewport. Click the snapshot to lock it in, as well as clicking done on the measurement worksheet. Maximum ascending aorta diameter will be the next measurement. This can be created either in the 2D images or in the vessel probed view. Roll the center wheel to navigate through our data. Holding the left alt key will activate the crosshair. 
click and drag the crosshair so that we are at the maximum diameter of the ascending aorta, obliquing as needed. Once we are at the maximum ascending aorta diameter, let go of the Alt key, double click in the aorta. The software will automatically drop a ruler tool for us. Click and edit if necessary. Once this measurement is complete, click done to lock it in and then click on the camera to save it. This was the 2D NPR method. The other method will be to use our probed vessel. To view this, click show vessel in the vessel analysis area at the upper left. View this as a straightened vessel by changing the view by left clicking. Note the histogram. Left click and drag the purple line using the histogram to aid in visualizing the maximum diameter. Once we're at that point in the short axis view, left click, this will document the max and minimum of the ascending aorta. Edit as needed, clicking done, what's happy with that measurement, and taking a snapshot as well. Use whichever method you prefer at your facility. Continuing on, we will now proceed to the access or the runoff portion of the exam. At the upper right hand corner of the screen, we will select our second volume, which is labeled Access 1. Left click on Access 1. Now that we have our runoff displayed for us, we will continue with our measurements. Our first will be our minimum abdominal aortic diameter. To aid in visualizing this data, we will go full screen or one up on the 3D view. Click on the one up button at the upper right hand corner of the 3D viewport to go full screen. Left click, minimum abdominal aorta diameter. If needed, click on the lightning bolt in the vessel to maximize it. Note the software has automatically measured this for us. Edit this as needed by clicking and dragging. Note that the software has automatically measured this in our short axis view. You can edit the ruler tool if needed by hovering over the start point or the end point of the ruler. Once we're satisfied with this measurement, click done to lock it in, then click the snapshot to save everything up to this point. We will now create measurements on the right aortic iliac. Left click the right aortic iliac to pull up that vessel. Our first measurement will be the right common iliac. Left click to select this measurement. In the straightened vessel view, take a look and rotate as needed, visualizing the vessel. Note the histogram is here to aid us in creating this measurement. If happy with where the measurement is, Click done and lock it in. If not, drag the slide bar and navigate to the proper area of the vessel to create this measurement, evaluating the contour and the max and min in the short axis view here. Once we are at that point, click done to lock it in, then click on the snapshot to save everything to the, up to this point. Next will be the right external iliac. Left click to select this measurement. Again, note the software has automatically created this measurement for us. Evaluate it, and if needed, edit by clicking and dragging. Also edit in the short axis view if needed. Clicking done to lock this in. Note that it is not necessary to edit the contour of the vessel here. The important part is the maximum and minimum. 
So hover over the start point or the end point of the ruler tool to edit when needed. Note that if the measurement is already locked in by clicking the checkbox, you cannot edit the measurement at that point. So you'd have to uncheck the box, click and drag, and then click done to lock it in again. Being sure that you save your work by clicking the snapshot. Next will be the right femoral artery. Left click to select this. The software has automatically measured this for us. We can click the slide bar at the right hand side to better aid in visualizing the vessel. We can also rotate our image around by clicking and dragging. Edit the line. The software has created this automatically if needed. Again, editing the ruler tool as well when necessary. Click done to lock this measurement in and then click on the snapshot to save everything up to this point. Maximum tortuosity is typically not created anymore, so that measurement will be skipped. We would create the same measurements on the left aortic iliac vessel as well. Now that our workflow is complete, we'll go to, through some additional functions that many users like. If we right click on our 3D image, we can select the option that says Show Overview. Show Overview will then give us a 3D image that has the measurements that we've completed. Note that since we're only on the access phase, the access measurements are the only ones that are displayed. To take a snapshot of this image, click on the camera. Next, we will load the report. The report at the upper right hand corner of the screen. Once the report editor is clicked at the upper right hand corner of the screen, the Taver report will generate and load. To publish this report to export to PAX, click the publish report button. Close the report editor at the upper left. Close Taver planning, which will return us back to the study list. From the results tab, we will edit our snapshots as well as any reports by left clicking, holding control to select multiple items. Once they're selected, right click and export to your DICOM destination.